Why would God allow your heart to care so much about a certain person even though you're not in a relationship with that person right now? Here are four answers to consider. And if you're someone who feels like God has called them to pursue marriage one day, then I wanted to let you know there's only a few more days to enroll in AGW University. This is where I offer the next level of my relationship training that just isn't possible to do here on YouTube. For more information about the current scholarship and all the bonuses, feel free to click the link in the description of this video before the deadline, which is May 28th. Number one, God has allowed you to care so much about this person because one day you will be together, but just not right now. One sign that you and this person are not going to be together is if you and this person don't have strong feelings for each other and if you never have those feelings. And I know that might seem a little bit obvious, but we need to look at that fact because one of the prerequisites in the Bible for romance is a desire in both of those people to want to be with each other. And so it's not a guarantee that if you do have strong feelings for this person that you're meant to be, it does give you at least one of the qualifying needs, prerequisites for a relationship to occur. So maybe this person doesn't have as strong of feelings for you right now, but certainly that can change. There are many examples of this type of thing happening. In the next three points, we're going to discuss three other possibilities that relate more to when you and this person are not going to be in a relationship together. Number two, God has allowed you to care so much about this person because love is worth the pain that sometimes occurs. When we experience pain in instances like this, really just any instance, the natural outcry of our hearts is why. And theologically, that question's not that difficult to answer because if you wanted to dial back why God, that, that question really related to anything that occurs, you could answer that question in the same way theologically, which is for God's glory. Everything that occurs eventually comes back to God's glory. And that can be difficult to see in the practical and day-to-day -day experiences, but again, theologically and biblically, that is the correct answer. Now, as we all know, that theological answer doesn't really sometimes help us emotionally. And why is that? I think one of the reasons that theological answer doesn't help us emotionally sometimes is because we don't have a deep understanding of what it really means to glorify God. It's a big topic, we can't fully cover it here, but at its essence, to glorify God means to bear his image, to reflect God and live like him. So that's going to mean that your heart loves what God loves, it hates what God hates, and you're trying to bear the image of Christ and follow Christ. And when you follow that line of thought, it is, true that you're going to end up loving people who don't love you because that's what God does. God loves people who don't love him back. And so as we reflect God's image and we have a love to give, we often give it to people who don't love us back as we reflect God's image because that's what happens to God. He loves people who don't love him back all the time. Now, here's the thing though. If you keep loving as God loves, eventually, Statistically, you will probably meet that person that God does have for you, just as God does have a church, a bride who loves him back. As we bear his image, we too usually end up meeting that person where we can reflect that imagery of Christ and the church's love for each other if we don't give up. Number three, God has allowed you to care so much about this person in a way that it, it almost hurts you because you didn't guard your heart fully. So like we talked about in point two, sometimes it's unavoidable. It's not always a bad thing if you experience pain because you love somebody or you have feelings for someone. That's not always bad, but there are times where we saw, we get into something that could have been avoided if we would have heeded God's warnings 
For example, like it says in Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So to guard your heart does not mean to wall your heart off. Rather, it means you love in a wise way rather than in a reckless, foolish way. It's unwise to fall in love with the idea of someone, to offer a greater commitment than the relationship deserves at this point, or to trust someone's words who has not shown you enough character through actions. In short, if you've offered too much of your heart to someone that mistreated it or just didn't want it, the path forward is to take it back. In prayer, rededicate your heart to the Lord, confess any sins that you've committed by not guarding it properly or perhaps idolizing someone. And when you give your heart fully back to God, you're simply giving your heart to the rightful owner. And therefore, it will return to God and you won't always have this endless pain about this person when your heart is back in the hands of God. And number four, God has allowed your heart to care so much about this person because God wanted you to be a light to this person. Now, I'm certainly not advocating for anything like missionary dating, which is a term that means someone tries to romantically pursue someone or get into a dating relationship with an unbeliever, even though they're a Christian, as a way of trying to help that unbeliever become a Christian, as a way of witnessing to them. That's really an unbiblical path since there's so many warnings in scripture about not being unequally yoked. But there's different possibilities that could occur. Sometimes God will give you a heart for an unbeliever because he wants you to be a witness to that person. And then it is also possible that after that person becomes a Christian, maybe something does happen romantically. You shouldn't witness to that person just for that purpose or hold on to that hope. You need to assess people for who they are right now. So don't go too far with that idea. If, if you have feelings for an unbeliever, don't, you know, fall in love with this concept, but we can't pretend like it never happens. So that is a possibility. And sometimes you care about another Christian and that Christian cares about you and God allowed your paths to cross for a season because he knew you two needed each other for that season. But not all relationships are built to endure. Some relationships are seasonal and that's okay. A seasonal relationship is not automatically a failed relationship or a sinful relationship. At times, God allows two people to help each other in an important way that will benefit them for the rest of their lives, but then he leads both of those people to move on. No matter what God is doing, always trust him. He has a good plan for your life. You just need to keep following him. And if you're a Christian single person who wants to glorify God in a relationship one day, I would recommend you explore the idea of enrolling in AGW University. Whether you're in your 20s or your 60s, I designed these courses to give you biblical principles that you can then apply to whatever the individual variables are in your life to help you meet, date, and marry the person God may have for you again, in that most biblical way possible. So if this is something you're interested in, feel free to click the link in the description of this video to learn more. And there's also a scholarship going on right now for those who enroll before the May 28th deadline. I'm Mark from applygodsword.com. Until next time, God bless.